Hi, this is Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today I'm going to build a globe liner. And this video is for complete novices. If you wanted to build a truck like this, and you don't know where to start, what you need, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you the options you need, like the radio, the tools you need to build it. We're going to talk about every little detail that you might not know. Uh, a lot of us in the RC world take it for granted that people know what ESC means, for example. We're going to talk about that. So if you've always wanted to build one of these, this is your video. Let's get started. As I get started on this uh, globe liner kit, um, again, this video is going to be really for, for novices who want to know all about it. So I'm going to tell all about it. The most popular questions I get are, what do I need to build it besides the kit? So I'm going to go over that first, and then I'm going to go over the tools that are required. Okay, the first thing you're going to need is a radio. Um, this is a six-channel radio by FlySky, a very popular choice for a lot of builders. And the radio needs to have a left stick that goes back to center. Most radios don't have this. Um, they they are ratcheted here for airplane use. So the FlySky radio, they make a adapter kit that you can change it to um, to a centering stick. This radio has already been done. I actually uh, have them this way. Uh, or you can do it yourself. I have a video on how to do it. But you'll need a radio. So there's our six channel radio. You need an electronic speed control with forward and reverse for brush type motors and this is a popular choice a quick run 1060 uh, I'm gonna have links for all this in the in the description so you need those you also need a couple of steer, uh, servos one for steering and one for shift uh, standard servos are fine these happen to be metal geared um, pretty much any servo will work typically you're gonna need a couple of servo extensions for most Tamiya trucks because the servo leads aren't long enough Okay, that's absolutely the required stuff. Now, um, one thing that's not required but I always use is a sealed ball bearing kit. And this replaces the bushings in the truck with sealed ball bearings. Probably want to get that because adding it later is really hard. You'd have to disassemble the entire truck. And they're not horribly expensive, so a sealed ball bearing kit is a good thing. Paint! You're going to need primer and paint, whatever color you like, whatever kind of paint you want. So those are the, re and you're going to need a battery and a charger. And we'll talk about that later. So those are the things you absolutely need to build the kit. Now let's talk about tools. The absolutely required tools are a couple of screwdrivers. Uh, a standard size and a smaller size. These happen to be the Tamiya screwdrivers. Um, the Tamiya screwdriver number two and number one, and they fit every screw uh, in the truck. These are my own personal ones here. The Tamiya has a larger size screw, and these are designed to fit the heads perfectly, and as you can see, they have a magnetic tip, which is wonderful for some of the tight places you have to get. And then they have a smaller size screw, and again, magnetic hardened tip. So these are really great screwdrivers. You can use any screwdrivers, but boy, I've found uh, that it, it makes a difference to use ones that, that are designed for the screws. Okay, so screwdrivers. A pair of needle nose pliers. These are my old reliable needle nose pliers. I've used these for probably 15 years. They work great. You need a set of needle nose pliers. Sprue cutters. And these are for clipping the parts from the tree. I actually use two different pairs. Um, this is kind of my, what I'll call my uh, gross cutting pair for really hard clipping. And then I have a set of uh, real fine tip for getting in and doing detail work. Um, but a pair of sprue cutters, a hobby knife, good old hobby knife, you need it, a pair of tweezers absolutely required. I use two different sets, a straight set and a, a bent set. They don't have to be particularly good, but I use them to even pick up the screws out of my uh, parts bins. I also use this Tamiya craft tool set. 
Um, I really like this. It has both the uh, the fine tip and the and the big tip screwdrivers, but it also has Allen wrenches. Now you don't absolutely need this set, and it has nut drivers because in the kit, Timia gives you an Allen wrench and this little nut driver um, here. Plus they also give you the a, a little small handy hold onto the nut drive. But I really like having these longer ones and this. I like the small handle, actually on the screwdrivers, I use these a lot because I can spin them faster and then if I need more torque, this rubber handle just snaps on there. Uh, this has been, I really like this set. It's a little spendy but, and it's not absolutely required, but kind of nice to have. And those tools come in the kit. That is pretty much all the tools you'll need. I use, of course, a, a building mat. Uh, occasionally, I use these bigger pliers for snapping on uh, ball joints and that type of thing. But you don't need it. You can use the needle nose pliers. So there's the basic tools to get the kit built. One other thing I use a lot of, and if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen this. I use these cheap dollar store muffin tins, and you can see I've even labeled this one, uh, to dump the little part screw bags in. And I use these bread pans to dump the bigger parts in. Otherwise, things roll all over the bench. And I'm telling you, if a Tamiya screw falls in the carpet, you never see it again. It's just the way it is. So the kit uh, comes nicely packed. And frame rails. Uh, one thing about the frame rails is they have a protective plastic covering on them that you want to remove before building. Everything else is boxed and bagged and packed, um, usually in sealed boxes like this. Right. We'll just open one and take a look at it. Get the knife here. So, the Tamiya parts all come bagged. And a lot of them are labeled, like here's an F bag with screws in it. And so that's where my muffin tin comes in, where I'll dump the F screws in here to keep them all in one place. There's lots of bags of parts. They give you uh, grease and thread lock in every kit. There's more bags. And in the older kits, like the Globe Liner and the King Hauler, some of the parts are bubble packed on this cardboard which I personally don't like because they're pretty hard to open so it's going to take a few minutes to open this. So what I'm going to do here, and, and you'll notice, or maybe you didn't notice, but you'll notice there's no, no body in here because I actually already removed it and painted it so it would be uh, ready to go for this build. And we'll, we'll talk about that when I get there. So I'm going to go ahead and unpack this kit, dump the parts in my muffin tins, and then I'll be ready to go. Well, you can see I've got my parts all opened up put in bins. Now one thing on the Globe Liner kit and also the King Hauler kit is there's this little bag in here and it has notice. And there was a running change in the kits where they put a deeper bevel on some of the shafts. This shaft here is an example. It's got a flat spot in it. And so they, they want you to use a longer grub screw and it's called for in the instructions. So I recommend that you go in and make a note in your instructions um, so when you get to that point you don't forget. And I dump these into the uh, into the e-bag uh, screws because that's where they would have been. So, But just a note, make sure you don't miss that. It's really important. To me, an instruction book. Some of the best instructions you'll ever see for a kit. Uh, first page here shows some option parts. They show a couple trailers and the roof spoiler, which looks awesome on this truck. So we're going we're gonna to look at that later. Uh, then they talk about tools that are required, and we already went over that. And here they just show that you need radio gear, including the radio, the speed control, and the servos. The speed control is also called an ESC. So when you see that term, it just stands for electronic speed control. Uh, the first step is to set up the servos, so you really want to have the servos when you build the kit. Now here's a neat thing about Tamiya instructions. Over here on the side, 
they give you a full-size drawing of each screw and they tell you where it is so BA1 would be in the A bag and they give you a full-size drawing where you can just set the screw on there it's very helpful because some of these screws like BB3 come in the B bag and there's two different lengths in there you can see that that one is too long so you can use this to match up and there's the correct one the screws that you want uh, on the servo mounting I'm gonna go into a little extra detail on that so we'll, we'll start with the servos but before we do that I want to talk about a couple of building tips that are important and the first one I'm gonna cut this part off of the sprue here with my sprue cutter but it leaves a little bit of a mark even with my really fancy screw, sprue cutters so then I'll trim it with a knife to get rid of that that sprue mark so that's just good building to get rid of all those marks and smooth everything off and uh, you're gonna want to do that on each part you cut off the tree on the chrome parts to me it does something a little bit different I'll use these uh, end caps for the tanks as an example and I'll cut them off. And when I cut that off it leaves a bump on the back side and the reason they did that is instead of the sprue coming into the side of the part it comes in up above so when you trim this off there's no mark in the chrome on the outside but you have to remember to trim those off because if you try to fit this and you leave those bumps on there it won't fit correctly so there's just a couple of tips about removing parts from the sprue I typically don't take the parts off until I need them just so I can find them because Tamiya has the sprues um, numbered and in the back of the book they have a drawing of each sprue with its number and the parts. So if you're having problems locating a part, you can go back here, you can find, for example, the J parts and find where it is. So if you're first starting out, I recommend you leave the parts on there until you need them. Makes it easier to find them. Okay, well let's get on to the servos. So here's our two servos and I popped them open and each servo came with a bag of little bits and these little bits are airplane bits and you do not need any of those you do not need the rubber bushings that go in here you don't need any of the screws or any of the hardware so that's going to go right in the trash instead we're going to use the Tamiya parts now in the instructions they show you here uh, two different um, plates that mount on the servos and they're written on the back uh, Sanwa Acoms or Futaba Tamiya and that just means that well, let's just punch them out here so we've got a tall one and a short one I'll cut out the two tall ones okay these are splined inside and they're different because some servos have a different set of splines so one of them won't fit and one of them will fit depending on the brand of servo you use so you use the one that fits toss the one that doesn't that's pretty straightforward okay let's set these up to set up the servos we have to move them to the center position and there's a couple ways to do that one is to use a little tester like this um, they're very inexpensive and I can plug the servo on and I can actually drive the servo with it or I can push a button and it will put it to the center position and Tamiya here on the instructions wants us to take the low wheel and put it so the arm is facing backwards now you can see my tester will move it and I'll put it back to the center and it's in the center so that's one way to do it if you don't have a servo tester I'll show you another way the other way to test it is to use the radio so I've got the radio turned on and I'll use the same 4AA battery to power up the radio 
on this particular radio all the black wires go to the outside so I'll plug this on and now my radio will move it and of course my radio will center it so either way works and if you don't have a 4 AA battery you can plug your speed control into this and the battery you're going to use the truck and power the receiver from the speed control so you can power it either way never ever hook more than five volts to the receiver it'll uh, smoke it and always remember on these receivers black goes towards the outside so now I've got that centered up and I can add the rest of the hardware okay the instructions show us mounting this size ball here and there's a nut capture plate in the back. We use a little bit of uh, Loctite on this. Loctite is very important on these RC kits. And you only use it where there's metal to metal contact. You don't need it where there's a screw that goes into plastic. So we'll thread that on. Okay, or you can use the little Tamiya wrench to tighten it. Now, there's a plastic ring that snaps on, and the ring snaps over this little bump here. Just snap that on, and then this mounts on top of that. And what that ring does is it gives a shock absorbing uh, for the servo. It's called a servo saver. It's a plastic washer that goes in here. And then this servo uses a special screw that came with it. I'm going to put some Loctite on that. And we'll put it in there. It happens to be an Allen head screw. Okay, and there's our steering servo all hooked up and ready to go. The shift servo is the same, only when we start out the plate is set at a 90 degree angle so I'll center this servo and mount the hardware on it. The only thing unusual about the shift servo is this plate has two little pins on it and you can set it in different positions and the reason for that is of course the further out it is the more it travels and you want to get it set so that it doesn't um, overpower the servo by going too far or not shift by going too little. Now on this particular servo I'm going to put it in the second notch from the top but you can always adjust that later. It's pretty easy to get to the servos in the truck. And on modern radios you can also adjust the servo travel in the radio. But just by the fact that I've used a lot of these servos and done a lot of these trucks I know that that second position in works pretty well. So that sets us up. I've got a little servo tester hooked up here. So that's what it looks like when it's all done and the servos are ready to install. The servo mounts have a, a smooth side and a side with bumps on it. And the side with bumps on it is the upside. And to me it shows you on the instructions where to mount the screws. They use these funky big flathead screws. And they just mount through here. So we'll go ahead and mount up the servos and get this assembly ready to go. So here's our assembly all mounted. Um, it's important to note that they give you uh, four screws even though there's eight holes and they mount them diagonally opposite but it keeps the servos very solid. So that's ready to install so we'll move on to the frame. So here's all the frame parts and an awful lot of these uh, F screws, this particular screw right here, we'll be using a lot of those. The frames, as I mentioned earlier, have this protective coating that you peel off. And they're also stamped. So right here is an R, so that's the right-hand frame. And here's the left-hand frame. The way I like to put my frames together 
is to mount all the si all the parts on one side of the frame and then install the other side. So I'll usually start at the very front, which will be this front bumper mount, and it fits in here like this, and is held in with, of course, one of these F screws. So I'm going to go ahead and just install that now. It the instructions show and it only uses one screw to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and mount that. Now the cross members, there's a cross member that goes right here and the web on the cross member faces up. So this cross member will mount in here like this. We use a couple of F screws and go ahead and mount this. And I'll add that other screw later. This box assembles like that, of course, with the same screw. Sorry, it'd be a little boring with this, but I kind of wanted to show the whole assembly. And then this mounts with three screws, but this aluminum upper plate mounts on here. Now, the aluminum upper plate actually has a front and a back. It doesn't tell you anything about it in the instructions, but one side is kind of smooth and rounded, and the other side is kind of sharp, and that's from the stamping process. Uh, washers are the same way. So I like to put the smooth part out, and then this uses a longer screw, BB3 screw, which is a little bit longer is in the B bag. Happens to be this screw right here. And it uses a little longer screw because, of course, you're going through the extra thickness of aluminum. And then the rear bumper mount will go in here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these pieces, and then I'll come back. The frame is put together on the one side, um, pretty straightforward. People often ask me about electric screwdrivers and I say uh, no way until you're really good at it because it's too easy to strip out the screws and there's not that many. So now we'll just uh, put the other side on and uh, screw it down to match. Well the frame is uh, put together, um, actually not very hard and it looks like you did something. So these front shock mounts just bolt on here and these fuel tank supports bolt on here. Since we're um, going right into metal, we're going to use a little Loctite. And all of these use this little short 3 millimeter screw. So we'll put these on both sides. And uh, I'll go ahead and get that finished up. I like these little screwdrivers. I can twist them faster. So I'll put these mounts on here with Loctite, and then we'll go to the next step. The front spring hangers go together like this. I always mount the dimple part away from the work. drop a screw through it. I've already used the instructions to pick out the correct length. And then there's a plastic spacer that goes behind here and it just mounts in the front of the frame. Like that. And there's a finished one on this side that'll be our spring hanger. Now that completes the basic chassis assembly. Next step is the rear suspension. Pretty easy. Um, I've got all the parts laid out here. These just mount like this. U-bolt drops over. Metal plate goes on the bottom. Again, it's a stamped part, so it does have a top and a bottom. I like to put the, the rough side up 
so the smooth side is down. Does it make a difference? Probably not, but in my own mind it does. Um, and I like to try to be consistent. It just makes for a good clean build. So those mount like that. These brackets here, this cool little shoulder bolt drops through the bracket. And a lock nut goes on the other side. The only thing to watch for here is there are two different lengths of the shoulder bolt. And the shoulder is taller. The one that has the taller um, shoulder is also less shiny. So it's pretty easy to spot them. And then here's a real critical thing that I discovered the hard way. And I, I got this one crooked on purpose, but you can see how crooked this is and it you got to line the spring up straight this way when you put it together hopefully you can see that um, if you don't there's another view of it really crooked if you don't what happens if you're right-handed you tend to get them both like this and your truck will crab when it's driving or the back tires will rub the frame so take a few minutes and really line that up straight so I'll finish putting these together. The final step then is bolting the springs onto the chassis. So this collar just drops in, bolt goes through, bolt goes through here, and then the spring goes on the other side. Now note that these bolts here go with the, the nut on the inside, both sides. Slides on like that, lock nut, we'll tighten that up and that basically gets our chassis done. So now it's time to build the rear ends and the front suspension. So you can see my rear end parts here, I've got the housings, the axles, the differential parts. Uh, 14 sealed ball bearings. We're going to use those instead of the kit provided bushings. And I am not going to show the build of this because I have a separate build video on building just the rear end. So I'll put a link to that in the description. But I will come back when the rear ends are done and show putting them on because that is critically important and one thing that a lot of people uh, messes up a lot of people. So we'll be back in a second after these are built. Well, there's my rear axles built. Um, nothing exciting from the other video except just remember to use the longer set screws in there. Now here's the critical part. These have got a bump stop on the top. And the bump stop has to go towards the frame. So the best is to start with the rear differential and mount it. I'm actually going to just go ahead and mount it a little bit here. I'll put a little Loctite in these. And these screws just go right through the spring hanger bracket. These go towards the frame. And it just mounts up on top there. Just going to kind of mount it loosely. Okay, so now once this is down, we've got this mounted, the bump stops are here. Now these bump stops also go towards the frame, but the trick here is you don't put the differential on the same side. It goes on the opposite side, so the differential bump is across. So this one mounts with the differential bump this way and this one with the differential bump that way. If you get one of these upside down or turn them around, what will happen is the wheels will turn this way. And that doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and Loctite this and finish putting it together. Once these are mounted, what I like to do is mount the rear suspension arms first. And they use a short bolt in this end. And there's a offset that goes against the plate there. So I like to mount those and then I'll grease up this little 
drive shaft. And then the long bolt goes through here. And then I'll put the nuts on and that captures that so you don't lose it. Um, another thing is if you bolt this down with the collar underneath, it won't pivot. So make sure that you get it up above the frame when you bolt it down. So I'll go ahead and put the nuts on those. Now the spring damper is uh, really pretty straightforward to put together. A little plastic spacer drops on the shaft and the shaft has a Phillips head Phillips screw head. So you just drop it through. Phillips screwdriver will fit right in there. And then I just put another screwdriver through the hole on the bottom and screw it together. So really pretty easy. Then there's two different color springs in the package. These use the black springs. And the top just threads on. So now we'll mount them on the truck. And to do that, there's just a little housing cover here. This drops through. This fits here. Bolt drops through and then it's threaded in the chassis and there's a little alignment pin here to hold it. So we'll mount those four. So you can see here the, the shocks mounted uh, just with a standard shoulder bolt up on the top and that gives us our rear suspension. So it's a walking beam suspension. You can see the shocks, the shocks and springs work or it'll walk. So it'll walk and it'll suspend. Uh, just like a real truck. So there we go. Back end's done. Now it's time to do the front end. Uh, the first thing are to assemble these links, steering links, and they're pretty straightforward. The ends just screw on. They're threaded. And typical nice thing about Tamiya instructions again is they give you a, a full-size drawing here that you can lay this on and you just screw these down and you don't have to worry about one going on further than the other because that self levels and the shorter one is actually in the screw bag in the A screw bag so don't spend a lot of time looking for it in the other bags it's in with the screws and it's black so it kind of hides so we'll do those two and there's a small one right here which is the shift linkage so I'm going to go ahead and adjust those and then I will install the front shocks. The forward shocks just mount with a spacer and a bolt into this shock tower. Use a little bit of Loctite there. So that takes care of all six of the shocks. And then this, uh, this front suspension just fits on a shoulder bolt. Again, the dimples face away from the part. Just put those on there, another spacer. And this one, the frame is threaded. Put a little Loctite in there. Make sure when you uh, are using a a good sized screwdriver that you don't tighten these too much. You can pull the threads out of the frame. This screwdriver with this handle on it gives you a pretty good grip, but you just need to get it snug since there's Loctite in there. All right. Well, our chassis is pretty complete. We'll build the front suspension. The uh, front suspension uses this cast metal axle. And the first step is to just add these little spring hangers. Get a little uh, Loctite in there. 
and they just mount on here on each side. The way I do it is put this on not super tight to start with and then the spring mounts up in this. There's a recess up here. The U-bolts drop over that and then another one of these metal retaining plates drops over the top again. I put the sharp side down and they use uh, on the King Hauler and the Globe Liner they've got these um, washer nuts. On some of the other kits they use lock nuts. So whatever your instructions say are the way to go. And so I just tighten these down. And then once those are tight, then I tighten that that spring retainer. That way you don't get it crooked and this doesn't seat properly. So I'm going to put the rest of those together. This is the uh, assembled front uh, suspension. At this point, the Tamiya instructions tell you to install it like this, but I I usually skip ahead one step and install the uh, the king pins and the axles first. I just find it a little easier while I can move this around. So they just have a capture nut that snaps in and a ball joint to prep the parts. And then, uh, and then they install, so I'll turn this around so it matches the instructions. This drops in here like this. The axle has a hole in it. It just fits in here, and then the kingpin goes up from the bottom side here. Goes through the whole assembly, captures the axle, and one of these little E-clips snaps on here. And that's the assembly. I'll do the other side and then I will snap on the tie rod and then I'll install it. So there's our front assembly and I always set these up with just a tiny tiny bit of toe in. Um, if you have toe out the truck will wander when you drive it. A little tiny bit of toe in uh, will make it drive a little nicer. So this just drops in here and these shoulder bolts hold everything together. So there's one here in the back, one in the shock, or one in the front, one in the shock, and one in the back. So, and they use lock nuts. So I will go ahead and put that on, completing the chassis. The next steps are the transmission. And I'm not going to show the transmission build because I have a separate um, building the transmission video that's uh, that I've had up for a while. And so I'll put a link to that in the description and I'm going to put this together and I'll come back before it's completely assembled and just show testing it. So I built my transmission and just a couple quick things before I seal it up. First is I always test them with a D-cell battery. No matter the stock motor or an aftermarket motor, if it doesn't run on a single D-cell, probably something's wrong and you can shift it. So, and I also run it both directions. Because once it's in the truck, um, it's, you know, you have to disassemble a lot of things to take it back out. Now, on this particular truck, I used a 55 turn motor. The motor that comes in the kit is about 27 turns. And when you add turns to the motor, it reduces the top speed and increases the torque. So, this makes the truck a lot slower. They're quite fast with the stock motor. And I'll probably use this truck uh, for some other testing eventually, so I wanted a slower motor. Uh, and now, I, you'll notice there's no grease on the gears. I'll go ahead and grease it up, put the cases on, and install it in the truck. So the last step is dropping this transmission into the truck. And to do that, you have to wiggle it back and forth. And then it drops in. I've got my drive shaft here that I've greased up. And in the globe liner, it's quite short.
and then I'll just put a little uh, Loctite on those and bolt it down <clears throat> and then my chassis is essentially done. Well here's the complete chassis, motor installed, everything put together. As you can see that was pretty straightforward. That's going to be the end of this video. Remember to look in the uh, description for links to either where you can buy this stuff or to the videos for the transmission or the rear end build. Uh, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in part two.